Hey everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you're watching this. I am so excited to finally announce Infinite Unified Panel is finally here and I get to show you everything about it. But before I do, keep in mind that the Infinite Unified tool, obviously it is really good for skin tones and that's what I wanted to make it for. But along the way, we found out that this can be used for anything, whether it's like color casts on bottles and beverages or landscapes where the grass is not perfect and you want to make everything more similar and fabrics for fashion, all kinds of stuff. So keep that in mind. And I really, really encourage you to go to infinite-tools.com and check out the other videos on the page because you're going to be able to see real use case scenarios and other techniques on how to use this because this is an introductory video on the settings and some of the great functions that we have as well. So keep in mind, this is just the beginning. Go check it out. I would highly encourage it. Okay, so with that being said, um, let's just jump into it. So this first image here is... Uh, given to us by Kat Ford Coates and she was really excited about Infinite Unify and she gave me this image thinking that you know well, I want to see what it could do with it and this is perfect we're going to go over two examples this first one here we're going to use something that I more than often use for since I started using gradient maps and that's going to be the color blend mode with a black mask and the best part about this is I don't really have to set anything up Everything is done for me. And there's a couple of ways to execute that. The first one, and let me just go and show you, is I'm going to select my lasso tool here. And what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to sample or select a range of tones that I generally like in a photograph to represent the rest of the skin tones. In this example, it's going to be the forehead. And just because it's, you know, it's not like desaturated like the chest is here in the shadows. It's, does, it's not like the makeup where it's oversaturated. It has a nice level of saturation and color. It's really beautiful. So I'll just go ahead and take my lasso tool and just do that. It's simple. You could do it on your background, on a new layer. You could do it at any point in your workflow. So that's really, really cool. Next, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select C as my blend mode. We have three blend modes here. And as I mentioned on the website, in the video section, we have a video going over what the difference of the three blend modes are. If you're not sure of it. We have C for color, H for hue, and S for saturation. So I'm going to click C for color. And then I'm going to uncheck this. I'll get to this in a minute in our second image, which I want you to definitely tune in for. Then I'm going to click on this mask option, which means it's going to add a black mask. And that's it. I'm going to hit create. And it does a work for me. And boom, there we go then automatically it creates this gradient map. If you don't see this, it's going to be under window and properties. So make sure you have that there. Okay. Next, um, that's it. Then I'm just going to click on my gradient map here. I have my opacity set to 100. Um, normally, as if you've seen me use gradient maps before, I always bring down the opacity. But because the selection is so good in this image, like it does a really good job automatically because it's, it's automated. It doesn't really matter if I keep it 100 or, or not. But for more than more often than not, I keep it to, you know, 40%, 35%. But because this is very accurate, I'll keep it around 50% on this one. Okay. Then all I need to do is take my brush tool. I'm going to keep my flow at 100 if I want to. Or if you want to bring it in gradually, just bring your flow down. Okay. Bring it down to like 10% or something. My brush tool is also going to change if I need to. My hardness will say at zero. Size will be relative to the image, but this one, I'm just going to continually change it with my bracket keys on my keyboard or shortcuts if you are using shortcuts. And I'll simply just brush over it just like that. You see how easy that was? It's almost laughable how easy that is, actually. I feel like I'm cheating. You know, this point in the process is something that I hated doing. This is something that I just didn't want to do just because I had to figure out the points, set the gradient map. It's, it's really annoying. It's literally just... Use a lasso tool, select the ones you want, and then create the gradient map. It's it's pretty cool. Now, keep in mind that, you know, most of the times I do use color as my blending mode, but there are cases where I do use hue or saturation. And seeing those ad advanced examples on the website are really going to drive that point home in how complex this can be in terms of the use cases and what it can fix. So there we go. Now, if I want to see my beautiful mask, I'll click option and click on my mask. And voila master master masker right here <laughs> um i could also come back over here a little bit into the face if i want to and i can also increase my opacity if i want to the cool part is if i want to change my blend mode 
I can just click on these letters here. Not that you would in this example, because color is the best blend mode, but there you have it. Let's say in the future that uh, you decide that you like this opacity and you like these settings, which I'm going to explain in a minute as well. You can come over here and say set as standard. And what that does is it saves the opacity, the blend mode, the smoothness, the gradient map, and this over here. So let's just jump into it. Um, aside from that, what happens is next time if you create one, it's going to remember your settings. It's going to remember all this and then basically just run with it. So if I go ahead and delete this for a, for a second, and if I do it again, and I just hit create, what happens is the opacity is remembered, and you can see all the settings here are remembered too. I didn't have to actually click on them again. So that makes it really, really easy. Let me just undo for a second and go back to what we had working. So you can see here, this is really, really nice. Let's talk about some of these sliders here as well. And for example, let's say that, you know, you create the gradient map and the skin tones are nice, but you kind of want to shift them a little bit because they're not perfect. Well, a couple of things you could do. Number one, this hue slider here, it's going to be kind of like the hue and saturation adjustment layer where if you shift the hue on the left, you can see it's getting more red and the right, it's getting more green or yellow. And normally I'm just going to keep that to zero, but in a pinch, if you need to do it, that's how to do it. Also, another thing that we can also do is increase the saturation. I'll do that manually by just adding a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And instead of increasing the saturation for everything like this, I can simply hold option or alt on my keyboard hover between these two layers here until I get this little arrow and then clip it. This is called clipping if you're not, if you haven't heard of that before. And then what it does is it only adjusts the saturation of your gradient map. So it's really powerful if you're trying to do something overall like that. Okay, so that's really cool and I hope you see the power in this. For most portraits, I'll be honest with you, this will do its job. This has done its job for me for a long time. Now let's take a look at uh, another really great example in case you want to be even lazier and have Photoshop do all the masking for you as well, even without having the lasso tool. So this gets even better. So take a look. Next image we have here is from April Killingsworth. And this is so indicative of portraits of people just generally because you have different blood flow issues happening across the skin, whether it's the face or the chest, or it's like you have, you know, some light coming in, come color cast. And I feel like if this tool can do this justice, it could do anything justice. Really, believe me. Now, let's say that I automatically want to select the skin tones. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to uncheck this black mask option. What that's going to do is it's going to create um, a skin mask automatically. However, it uh, might do a pretty good job. It might not. But it depends on what Photoshop thinks is a skin tone. I want to have a little bit more control than that. I want to be like, you know what? I want to determine what a skin tone is and what isn't. So the way that we do that is simply click on this little picture frame icon. It's called the open dialog icon. And what that's going to do for me is, for example, let's say, let's say I'm going to hit create. And now it automatically pops up with this color range function, which determines what Photoshop thinks is a skin tone. If I don't like that, I can simply just increase it or decrease it. And it gives me a very good starting point as a mask. And obviously it doesn't have to be perfect um, because you can always just brush and continue on from there, but it gives you a fantastic starting point. And secondly, what it does is it's doing this mask so it can determine like what range of skin tones should it pick to unify. So it knows what colors you're trying to look for to, to blend together, if that makes sense. So that's really nice too, but I can also alternatively click on sampled colors here in select and then kind of like manually select some of these colors and then change the fuzziness slider if I want to, to get it really perfect. So what I'm doing here is I'm holding shift on my keyboard. And once I select one, obviously it's not going to select everything because it's not doing that. Um, I can increase the in fuzziness if I want to, but it's starting to select the background. So that's not really nice. So I'll bring the fuzziness down like this, hold shift, and then click on some of the other skin. So I think that's actually a pretty good starting point. And I think that's pretty good, actually. It doesn't have to be perfect. So keep my, it does not have to be perfect. I'm going to say OK. And then automatically it does the rest. See, it made a little mask there. And now it actually did it. It actually selected all the skin. And it got rid of that green. It got rid of that red. And then what I could do, if I want, is use a black, black brush, like so. And then I could paint away 
any areas that I don't want affected. Like maybe even the eyelids, maybe even some of the makeup if I want to. I can then just brush away the colors in the hair if I don't want that selected. You know, you could do pretty much anything. If you want, you can even put this layer inside of a group and then mask the group. So that way, any changes you do is not going to be detrimental to the original mask. So that's kind of cool too. Another fun part is you can even do a, a unify mask just for the hair if you wanted to. So for instance, if I decide to do that, I'm just going to hit, I'm going to turn this off, go back to my black mask, same color option. Now, before hitting create, I'm going to hit option. I'm sorry, I'm going to go to my lasso tool here for a second. And I'm just going to select some, you know, some areas of the hair to unify like that. Okay. Now I'm going to hold option or alt and then click create because what that's going to do, it's going to actually add another layer. There we go. See, so it's not going to override the original. Now with this one, I can actually go ahead with my brush tool and I'll use a 2% flow and I'm just going to go ahead. Actually, let's use a 10% flow. Forget about it. I'm just going to paint it in really quick. So you can see here that it's actually getting rid of that color influence. Now, one thing you might notice or you might not notice is sometimes it's actually painting beyond the hair. Now, there's another feature that it built in called the blend if. And the, what the blend if does is based on the actual gradient map and the selection you did, it remembers like the luminosity range. For example, it remembered how dark this was, how light that was, and anything beyond those darkness and lightness values, it's going to cut off with a blend if mode. And if you're not familiar with blend if modes, they basically where the layer is off or on. If it's above a certain darkness level or below a certain darkness level, it'll kind of turn it off. So let's click on that. And you can see it doesn't do a perfect job, but it does a really good job enough where Beyond some of that area, if I turn this on and off, which you can do, you can see that I actually painted in the background a little bit. So if I turn that on, it's going to be very, very specific. So that's good sometimes if you have a really hard time masking and you want a quick helper to really nudge the gradient map along. And finally, the last option, which is really interesting, is this little eye button. So this eye button here, if I turn that on, it's just going to add an X over my mask temporarily so I can see like what the colors look like somewhere else in case you want to kind of uh, get a general idea of what's happening. Now, last but not least, the last thing that I want to talk about here is that if I go between these two gradient maps here, it remembers the exact samples and the exact selection of the panel. So this is cool because if I want to make any adjustments, I can. It remembers everything. I even love this little spinny icon that happens as I'm holding over create, which is really nice. And yeah, so aside from that, another last thing to mention is that there's a smoothness slider that we haven't talked about yet. Now, the smooth slider is really interesting because you don't really have to know that every single time, because to be honest, 50 works really good for me and I don't need to adjust that too much. However, what it's doing is that if I go ahead and bring it down to zero, see these little different nuances that happen? So the smoothest slider is basically like the number of, it takes a number of samples that you selected, but it remembers the most nuanced tones of those samples and uses that to create these five main points. So it averages that out and organizes it by hue and creates a gradient map based on these samples that it took. So if I go down to like, say 75, it changes it sometimes a lot based on how smooth those samples are. So it kind of smooths out those, you know, outlier tones that might be too saturated or might be too undersaturated and kind of averages out a little bit better. So for me, I think that for the most part, 50 works really well. And ultimately, I think that pretty much covers the entire scope of the Infinite Unify. And you can see how tremendous it is and how it works really well. Another last quick tip is that there's an option called Legacy Mode. And the only thing about Legacy Mode is that, let's say, for example, I turn off my preview. If I decide to move and shift my hue, it's only going to show me what happens as I let go. So if I let go now, boom, now it shows me. If I go over here and let go now, now it shows me. But if I turn off legacy mode and keep it to how it is, 
it's going to update as I move the slider along. I prefer this, but for people who might have a really slow computer, keep in mind that legacy mode is probably better for you. And the other things that are like restore defaults and reload panel if things aren't working correctly and for customer support services and stuff like that, that's what it's pretty much used for. I think that pretty much covers everything about Infant Unify. I am so excited to see what all of you do with this. And as I mentioned again, go to the website, check out the videos. There's real use case scenarios. This is just a general idea of what's possible. The two things that I really want people to have a takeaway from is that A, you could use the lasso tool to select the skin tones. Just use the color blend mode. See, it remembered everything. Just use the color blend mode and a black mask if you want to use it like I normally do and have taught in the past. Or like this example where you can see that skin tones are predominantly the main part of the image, then you can end up using the open dialog box, either or blend if it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. Um, and then make sure the mask option is turned off. Then what happens is it does what I just mentioned. It samples the skin tones and then kind of plays around with that and makes an automatic mask. Then you can massage the mask if you want to and kind of add or edit it. But as you notice, it really wasn't a huge factor whether or not I modified that mask entirely or not. So there you have it. Aside from that, I think you know this tool, as you can see, has saved me so much time. I think I messed up here just a little bit for some reason. It has saved me so much time. And I feel like no matter who uses this panel, no matter what you do, you're going to get so much use of it. I would really love for you to share your images in the group, whether it's the Instagram or whether it's the Facebook groups. I just want to see what you do because we're going to feature people along the way. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. I'm very excited to see what you guys create with it.